Hi, welcome to the next video in the GateStorm series, Quick Start, Using CV. In this video, we're going to get you started using control voltages to change settings in the GateStorm. Before we get started, the first thing we want to do is load up preset 1 from bank 3 that we saved in a previous video. Remember, this was created using template 1, which didn't have any CV settings mapped. The first thing we want to do is let's set up lane 1 to decrease the length of the pattern from CV1. So here's CV1. Now something I want you to notice is down here, this little area, this shows you what the CV values are coming in. So as you see, as I increase this, you can see it tracks real time. This is done so that you can see exactly what the CV values are that are coming in. Likewise, there's little indicators of the 25, 50, 75 and 100 percent values. All right, so CV settings are accessed by going into the CV button here. Now purple things are lane CV controls and as you scroll up and down both simple and complex have them. Just as a quick note, if you go a little further when you get to the orange page, these are bank CV and trigger settings. Here you have CV control of the rotation out and CV control of the patch mode. We're not going to cover patch mode in this video, but we will talk about rotate out later. So let's go back to the lane settings. So we said we want to have this length get shorter from CV1. So what you would do, look for CV length, which is on button two, and you hit it. When you hit that, it brings up this little CV control page. It starts out by asking you which source you want to use. So as I rotate, it's either source, CV1, CV2, CV3, CV4, all the way up to CV6. These are the CV settings. So I'm going to select one. I'm going to push the encoder in and you'll see it switches to say value. Now you can apply up to 100% positive or negative with this. So we're going to go ahead and map this all the way up to 100% negative. So if I rotate backwards, you'll see that this little circular part shows backwards and it shows up in the top corner, negative 100. So now if I turn the CV value up, you'll notice that the length is changing. And you'll see it shown down here as it goes to those values. So that's 100% negative. Now if we only wanted to go 50%, we could back that off. Now it's only 50%. Let's go down to 25%. So now this full range maps to a change of 25%. Now one thing you'll notice is it's switching in time with this clock still. Now press any button to exit and you'll see there's a sync setting. If you turn sync off, now it happens immediately. But if you want those changes to be in time, I normally leave sync on. And now you see down here that CV1 is indicated that it's controlling the length and yellow means that it's on. So let's go and select lane two. And on lane two, let's go ahead and increase the pattern based on CV1. So I'll do the same thing. I'll go into length. I'll turn the source to one, push the button, and now I'll go up, let's say to 75%. So now, when I increase this, this is getting longer and this is getting shorter off the same CV. And it's being done in sync with this clock. Now likewise, if exit out with any button, if we went down to the logic of the simple lane, we could do the same thing. So let's go and we'll select the CV that controls logic, which is three on this page. Now we're gonna set this to listen to CV2. So we'll rotate twice, push the button, and now we'll increase by, let's just say 100%. So now, 
You can hear as the logic switches, and the logic is switching again with this time. Any button to exit. Okay, before we look at the CV mod matrix page, let's look at one more CV control, and this is for the bank. So again, if we select the CV button until we get to the bank CV trig page, we're gonna take a look at CV rotate O or rotate output. So this works like all the rest of the CV controls. So if we go ahead and select it, we're gonna change the source to CV3, and then we're gonna set the value to 100%. So if you notice over here, if we rotate, you're seeing a one and a down arrow. It's showing the direction of the rotation. Again, these are all changing with respect to the global clock since global sync is on. This is really fun to play with. Now, exit out with any button. I'm gonna go ahead and show you an advanced feature here as well. Let's say you didn't want the kick drum to rotate. Select the outs to get to output locking. We're gonna lock A. As you can see, it's in orange. Now if we rotate, kick drum never changes. The accents are moving. All right, so we'll go ahead and turn that off. And let's write this out to preset two of bank three. We need to write both because we just made a change to the global CV settings or the bank CV settings. And there you go. So the last thing we want to look at is the CV mod matrix. Press the display button and you'll bring up the CV mod matrix. Now this shows both trigger information and CV information. These are for the lanes and this is for the bank slash global settings. So here you can see we have one and one which are mapped to CV1 and you can see that green means positive and red means negative that it's being applied and it's showing you the amount that gets applied. Likewise, down in the logic function, you can see that we have CV2 and again, same thing. And then for the rotation amount, you can see that as well. I also notice the S here and these S's all indicate sync mode. If you were set to free, there'd be an F in those locations. You can just press the display button again to exit. And if there's a point where you want to shut off all the CV and trigger inputs because you want to make changes to something, this is especially important if you have a CV set up to change patches, hold the display button in. After about a second, you'll see that it'll switch back to whatever page it was on, and you'll see the patch in red. This indicates that it is ignoring. So go ahead and hold it in for a second again, and it will go back to listening. So in the next video, we're going to look at the trigger inputs. Thanks for watching.